during the month of November in 1976 in the Philippines province of Capiz. An unusually high rash of what were classified as miscarriages took place within a week of each other. All of the women gave similar disturbing stories as to what happened. This is a horrific story as told by 29-year-old Maya, one of the women. It's been translated from Tagalog to English. I was four months pregnant the day it started. It was fairly late in the evening of November 3rd, which happened to be the day my father passed away two years ago. I was cooking dinner for my husband and me who was still at work at the time and I'd gone out back to grab some more wood for the stove. I remember it being very quiet as I knelt down to pick some up when I heard something rustling the leaves in the coconut trees by our house. It startled me at first, but I knew it could be anything, as there were always wild animals running around at night, especially stray cats, and they liked climbing the trees to get away from the wild dogs. As I turned around to go back inside, I heard the laughter of a woman from up in the trees. I nearly dropped the wood I was holding and immediately stopped. I stood there as fear struck me, unable to move. Something inside me immediately said, run into the house. I tried moving my feet, but they wouldn't. It was like they were stuck in deep mud. As I stood there, I again heard the sinister laughter of a woman. This time I looked up into the trees to see what it was, but it was too dark to see anything. I started panicking and yelled out loud to myself, move Maya, move Maya. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I was able to move my feet and ran back into the house. Once inside, I ran to the corner and cowered down, waiting for my husband to come home. I don't remember the last time I'd been that scared. About an hour later, I heard someone at the door and felt relief as I knew it was my husband. As he walked in, I jumped up and ran to him, hugging him tightly. What's wrong, Maya? he asked. I'd been debating whether or not to tell him, as he might laugh and tell me it was nothing. Ultimately, I decided to tell him, and as I did, he kept a straight face, which surprised me some. When I finished, he went out back with the lantern to check things out. He came back a few minutes later saying he'd found nothing. I was still scared, but at least he was home, which made me feel less uneasy. I had a hard time sleeping that night, though, as every sound made me sit up in bed. The next morning, like usual, I was awakened to the sound of our rooster's loud crowing after getting only a few hours of sleep. I remember feeling dark and empty inside that morning. It's hard to describe how I felt, but it was something I hadn't felt before. My husband had already gotten up early and left for work as usual, which left me alone there by myself. I made the decision when I woke up to get enough wood for dinner while it was still light outside. I then went about my day as usual, but kept thinking about the woman's laugh I'd heard. I couldn't get it out of my head. Later that day, as I was standing in the kitchen about to start making dinner, darkness was settling in and I'd realized I'd gotten busy and completely forgotten about getting wood during the day. I quickly went to the back door, grabbed the door handle, but stopped before turning it, as that sinister laugh went through my mind. The problem was, though, I needed wood in order to cook dinner and knew my husband would be starving when he came home, so I had no choice. I slowly turned the doorknob, stuck my head outside, and looked around. I looked up at the coconut tree and could still faintly see it as it wasn't total darkness yet. I took a deep breath and started walking towards the wood pile, looking all around me as I did. When I got to the pile and bent down to pick some up, I felt something touch my left shoulder, then heard a whooshing sound. I screamed out loud as I jumped up, turning around to see what it was. I was so frightened, I peed myself right there. I wasn't sure what to do. I couldn't think or move as I was so overcome with terror. I looked over at the back door and told myself to run inside. I was getting ready to run when something grabbed me from behind and started swiftly pulling me along the ground through the mud and weeds. As I was dragged along, I tried looking up to see what it was, but it was too dark and the weeds were too high and thick. I was dragged for quite a ways before suddenly it stopped. I struggled to get up being four months pregnant, but once I got up, I hurried back to the house. Once inside, I quickly shut the door and moved a chair in front of it. I then went to the corner and started sobbing hysterically. My husband wasn't going to be home for at least another hour or two. Waiting for him to come home was the longest time of my life. Once he came home and saw me huddled in the corner, covered in mud, he quickly ran over to me asking me what had happened. I told him everything that had taken place. 
He then grabbed the lantern and hurriedly went outside. He came back about 10 minutes later saying he'd found nothing except where I'd been dragged to the mud and there were no footprints other than mine. We talked for a while as he calmed me down. He said he'd stay home with me the following day, but we both knew that wasn't an option because we barely had enough money to buy food as it was. We ate a small dinner, then went to bed a while later. It wasn't long before he was out and snoring. I knew I wasn't going to sleep much, if at all, so I laid there as what had happened hours earlier replayed in my mind over and over again. A few hours later, my eyelids got heavy as I began to drift off to sleep, when suddenly I heard something running along our tin roof. I quickly sat up and shook my husband as I yelled out to him to wake up. What's wrong? he asked as he jumped up. I heard something on the roof, I replied. It was probably just a cat or something, he said. It didn't sound like a cat. It sounded like something with two legs and was too heavy to be a cat, I responded. All right, I'll go check it out, he said as he got up and went over to light up the lantern. He looked over at me and I could see it in his eyes. He was getting scared. He then went outside and out of sight. I could faintly see the lantern's light coming through the windows as he walked around the house. I sat there in suspense waiting for him to come back when I heard a woman's voice behind me whisper my name, Maya. I fell forward on the floor and started crawling away as I screamed out to my husband. He came running back inside as he shouted, What is it, Maya? What's wrong? I heard a woman's voice behind me whisper my name. I replied as tears rolled down my cheeks. He then grabbed me and held me tight the rest of the night. I don't remember him waking up and leaving as I must have been in a deep sleep. I do remember the sun hitting my face through the window as I slowly opened my eyes. The first thought that came to my mind was why didn't our rooster wake me up like it always did. It usually wakes me up long before the sun rises. Odd, I thought, but maybe a stray cat or dog killed him, which isn't unusual. As I got up, I realized I was starving and thought about what to eat for breakfast. I was craving rice. Like always when I cook, I needed wood for the stove, so I walked to the back door. As I opened the door and stepped out onto the dirt, I felt something hit my forehead. I put my hand to my forehead to see what it was and was a bit taken aback. It was blood. Fear shot through me as I turned around and started backing up so I could see where it was coming from. I shrieked as I could see the head of our rooster dangling down from our tin roof. I ran back inside the house and lay down on the bed. I cried hysterically as I laid there. I felt like I was losing my mind. Never has anything like this happened to me before. Once I settled down, I began to think about what would have killed it. It couldn't have been a cat, I thought, as there's no way for them to get up that high. My mind then went to the thing running across our roof last night and knew it had to be that, whatever it was. I laid there for quite some time, but hunger eventually got the better of me, and I knew I needed to eat, as I was eating for two people. I got up, went over to the back door and looked at the door handle for a while before grabbing it and turning it. As I slowly opened the door, I was shocked to see the rooster's head was now gone. I looked down at the ground and could see there was a small pool of blood that had seeped into the dirt, so I knew I wasn't imagining things. As I stepped outside, I made sure to step over the blood. I tried looking on the roof to see if it was somehow still there, but I was too short to see anything. I then went to the wood pile, grabbed what I needed, then quickly went back inside. As I started making the rice and vegetables, I couldn't shake the feeling something very bad was going to happen. After I cooked and ate breakfast, I needed to lay down and take a nap. I was exhausted from everything that had happened over the last few days, that and lack of sleep. It didn't take long for me to enter a deep state of sleep and start dreaming. I don't remember any of the dreams except for one. There was a little boy standing in darkness with two dark hands on his shoulders. The little boy kept repeating the same thing over and over again. Mommy, we're coming for you. Mommy, we're coming for you. In my dream, I was screaming to myself to wake up as the little boy got closer and closer to me. When the boy was within touching distance of me, something suddenly grabbed my arms and legs, pinning me to the bed. Something also covered my face, so I was unable to scream or open my eyes. I then felt something sharp and pointy moving its way up my leg towards my belly, lifting up my nightgown as it did. I'd never felt so helpless. I could do nothing. 
Suddenly, without warning, something sharp was thrust through my navel and went inside me. That was the worst pain I'd ever felt. This went on for about five minutes, then suddenly whatever had been holding me down was gone. I immediately put my hands on my belly and could feel it was wet. Once my eyes adjusted, I could see my hands were covered in blood. My belly was also losing its firmness. It was then I knew something terrible had happened to my unborn child. I screamed out from the shock of what had just happened. All I could do was wait for my husband to come home. I again felt the darkness and emptiness I'd felt before. I don't remember falling asleep, but I remember my husband shouting when he saw me in bed with my belly and hands covered in blood. It was mostly a daze after that, but I do remember him leaving and coming back with some neighbor ladies to watch over me while he went to fetch the doctor. It wasn't too long before the local doctor showed up and started checking me out. I remember him saying he was unable to get the baby's heartbeat and something seemed very wrong. I was then taken to the nearest hospital where I was examined by several doctors who were stunned to see there was no longer a baby inside of me and there were no signs I'd given birth. They said something had in fact pierced my navel though. Whatever that thing was, I know it took my baby. 18 other women in Cappies who'd also lost their babies were questioned by the local police over the next few weeks, with all of them giving similar chilling stories. For more scary horror stories, please subscribe.